Hello and welcome to The Big Picture, the show where we discuss the big events of the week and try to go beyond the news to understand the processes that are driving it. This week, the Prime Minister from the ramparts of the Red Fort on August 15th announced the creation of a Chief of Defence Staff. The following day, the Defence Minister, Rajnath Singh, indicated that India is rethinking its no-first-use nuclear doctrine. To discuss the significance, the rationale, the implications of these twin announcements, we have with us one of India's most distinguished security and defence analysts, Commodore Siyu Bhaskar, the Director of Society for Policy Studies. Thank you for joining us, sir. Let me begin with the PM's announcement. How significant is the creation of a Chief of Defence Staff? As announcements go, I would say that it is very significant. I would even go to the extent of putting the four letters very in uppercase, meaning that the whole question of getting the political endorsement for the Chief of Defence Staff is something that's been pending for the last 20 years, if I recall right, because the first formal acknowledgement that India needs to be looking at the creation of this post, a CDS, is during the Vajpayee Watch, meaning that after the 1999 Kargil War, we had a Kargil Review Committee. And I do want to add that the Kargil Review Committee, headed by the late Mr. K. Subramaniam, did not refer to the CDS. They spoke about the need for a revamp of the Higher Defence Organisation of India, but there is no specific recommendation for CDS in the Kargil Report. It comes later when we have the group of ministers, which flows out of Kargil Review Committee. And then the Vajpayee government sets up another committee under Mr. Arun Singh. And this has got a very interesting political background, meaning that Mr. Arun Singh was a minister of state in Rajiv Gandhi's cabinet. For defence. For defence. So he had a Congress, shall we say, pedigree or affiliation. And to Mr. Vajpayee's credit, he wanted a professional who could take these recommendations to the next level. So he set up the Arun Singh committee. And it is under that aegis that there is a specific recommendation made that India needs ACDS. This is 2000, 2001. It's in 2019 that Prime Minister Modi formally announces a kind of political green signal, if you will. But I do want to add that this is only an announcement. The hard work begins now because we have to define the role of the CDS and the locus of the CDS in the structure of governance and the higher defence management of India. Before I get to what the government needs to do next to operationalise the announcement, I'd like to go back to why there was this need felt for a CDS? Well, many countries that were trying to bring their militaries up to speed felt that there was a need for integration of capabilities. Because if you look at the models that countries have, many of them were post-World War II. In our case, after independence, we had an Army, Navy, Air Force. And because of October 1962 and the war with China, and I would say the political debacle between Prime Minister Nehru then and Defence Minister Krishna Menon, the Indian military and its higher defense organization was actually in shambles. So after 62, you find that the army gets the highest priority, then the Air Force, and the Navy in many ways is the Cinderella service in India. But by the time you come to the end of the Cold War, we're talking about 1991-92, Prime Minister Narasimha Rao is in the chair. Most countries felt that there was a need to revamp. Different countries had their own experiences, but the cardinal principle was we need to integrate the capabilities of the military. A good example is aviation. Earlier, it was only the Air Force that had complete control over any air asset. Progressively, when the Army was using gunships, helicopters, and the Navy needed air power for maritime reconnaissance, you found that the primacy of the Air Force on air assets was being diluted. So that's just a very sort of simple example. But the need for integration was felt, as I said, America has its own model, Britain has its own model, so does France and so on, democracies. India needs to evolve its own model. We cannot take a template from any other country. But the real secret is to ensure that India's limited financial resources are better optimized for a given capability. So the need for integration was felt by the Arun Singh Committee. They made a recommendation. But I think in India, we have a DNA of a certain inter-service rivalry. Now, that itself is also not new. Every country, every military has its own 
rivalries. I mean, you go to any military unit and you'll find the Air Force has its own view of the Army, the Army of the Air Force. Navies, by the way, are considered to be dumb sailors and all this goes <laughs> on. But in the Indian case, I would say we have an even more complex challenge that we have one of the most skewed Army, Air Force, Navy ratios in the world because we have a 1 million Army, 1 million plus. An Air Force, that's about 100,000 plus and a Navy that's between 60, 70. So very broadly, we are talking about 22 is to 2 is to 1. Okay. And if it makes any sense, the only other country that perhaps which has a more skewed ratio than us is Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it says much. But I'm saying all these are factors. And how do you use the limited financial resources? Currently, everyone is in a silo. The Army says, I need 56% of the financial outlay. The Air Force needs 26%. The Navy gets the balance. Who is going to tell the Prime Minister of the day that we need to divert resources into cyber, mm. into space? Maybe spectrum is the new area for mm. technology and warfare. So these are complex issues. Who is going to kickstart Make in India? Mm. You know, these are all interrelated. So I think the CDS was supposed to be a person who would be able to do the kind of networking in terms of systems engineering, if you will. Mm. Comprehensive national power and the relevance of the military in the overall comprehensive national grid. That's how I would say that the need for the CDS was felt. Is there an apprehension that the CDS would end up not necessarily being prejudiced, but would end up being partial to the service he comes from? You know, that is an anxiety. It has been said in the past, but this is where I think the government of the day would have to make the appropriate choice, which is why, as I said in the beginning, defining the role of the CDS, what he will do is very critical. My personal kind of advocacy is that this should not be done in a hurry. It should be done through an act of parliament. I use the word locus, saying that we have a very anomalous situation in India today where when you look at the responsibility for India's defense, whom does it lie with? It lies with the defense secretary. And the three armed forces chiefs, Army, Navy, Air Force, in a lighter vein, they say they are the invisible men. They do not come into the formal structure of the rules of business of the government of India. We are a parliamentary form. There's prime minister. There's the Cabinet Committee on Security and at the next level, the official who is responsible is the Defence Secretary. Now, this is clearly anomalous, untenable. But nobody in India wanted to touch this and this is where I want to make a slightly, shall we say, emphatic point. I have long said that the politician is abdicated when it comes to national security because the need to reorganize, as I said, it was mentioned even in the Cargill Committee. But though Mr. Vajpayee tried you know, he got overwhelmed in 2001. You remember we had 9-11, the attack on parliament. parliament. So, you know, he couldn't pay attention to this. But the recommendations were there. Subsequently, in the Manmohan Singh, you know, tenures, NDA, uh, UPA 1 and 2, we had a number of committees that task forces presented reports. But Prashant, the Indian parliament has not discussed any matter of significance related to national security and defense even once. No, that's in the last the, few decades or? Since, as I said, it, after the Cargill, Cargill Committee. For the to last 20 years. 20 years. The, the, the defense budget which goes into hundreds of thousands of crores is passed by voice vote. And this is the sad part. So that's why I welcomed Prime Minister Modi's uh, announcement. And I'm sure he knows about the scale of the issue and the problem. So this, I think, is a very, very welcome kind of political endorsement of the need to look at defense. It's a bit like saying that what General Khanduri had said in his report is one of many issues Let's that needs to be discussed. And the CDS would have to be given, you know, he has to be empowered so that he can discharge. Because if you look at what Mr. Modi said from the ramparts of the Red Fort, <clears throat> he said our military must become more effective. Hmm. To what end? To a larger political and diplomatic objective. Hmm. And the only way to do that is to say that we do not have an abundance of resources. India is constantly under financial pressure. There are development sectors, there are other areas. So within that limited financial allocation, I think we have to bring more bang to the buck as it were mm. and that is where i think the cds would have to prioritize advise the government of the day and perhaps this is too early to say this but i think the integration of capabilities mm. it's a bit like saying that if india has to have the equivalent of a northern command should we not have all assets reasonable you know we talk mm. about unity of command mm. you know in an operational mm. sense mm. or the anomalous situation in the east you know india is looking east india mm. is acting, acting east, east. 
where is the eastern army operating from kolkata where is the eastern naval command in visakhapatnam where is the eastern air force in shillong so we need to have these assets and also create the new command space cyber etc so i think the cds and the role that would be assigned would have to be defined because at the end of the day to my mind the, the cds will become a heat sink mm. he'll have to deal with the politician mm. he'll have to deal with the bureaucracy mm. he'll have to deal with the three services yes, he has to deal with intelligence mm. i mean the intelligence czars of india are their own bosses but in the larger you know sort of grid of national security intelligence is a critical input mm. at the moment mha has its own kind mm. of shall we say command and control mod defense has its own command and control then we have the james bonds they have their own command and control all this has to be brought together so the cds is actually uh, i would say uh, hat of thorns mm. at the end of the day but we must make the right start mm. that is why i repeat defining the role mm. of the cds and empowering it through an act of parliament after deliberations i don't think we'll get it right the first time but i think prime minister modi has set the ball rolling now we have to see whether we can get this done by the next independence day one of the stakeholders that you mentioned in your column for the hindustan times was the national security advisor so we've seen that the national security advisor has become very powerful as uh, the role has progressed what is going to be the cds's relationship with the national security advisor you know the reason i'm smiling is that i'm reminded of a conversation that we had with mr brijesh mishra hmm. if you remember he was india's first, first national. national security advisor hmm. along with mr k subramaniam hmm. who was my boss hmm. but as i said all i will say is that this is a very delicate relationship hmm. the one between the prime minister and the nsa hmm. in this case we have mr modi and mr doval we are aware that mr ajit doval now has cabinet status mm. so how the cds is going to be positioned mm. in modi 2.0 mm. when mr doval is there as mm. the cds and has cabinet status mm. will call for some very deft i would say kind of uh, political management if you will to make the cds effective and realize the vision that modi has about making the indian military more effective, effective. let me move to the second theme uh, the defense minister has spoken about how india is committed to the no first use doctrine but in the future if circumstances so dictate there could be other possibilities i'm paraphrasing him yeah, yeah, but yeah. that seems to be what uh, he hinted at uh, is this a drastic revision of our nuclear doctrine and does it in some ways dilute the case that india has been a responsible nuclear power because we have stuck to nfu throughout and is there a rationale for you know thinking? since mr rajnath singh made this statement <clears throat> in an event that was linked with mr vajpai mm. the prime minister on whose watch the nuclear test was carried out i would say that there appears to be a signal that maybe the politician in india is sort of looking at this issue you know with greater interest than was the case before the reason i'm saying this is that when mr parikar was the defense minister mm. if you recall mm. he had made a similar observation but said it was his personal opinion exactly mm. so now that we have mr rajnath singh mm. he is the defense minister relatively new in his job a very seasoned political leader in his own way if he has found it uh, fit to make the statement in the public domain as an analyst my conjecture would be that perhaps you know there are some tea leaves that are being stirred within the political sort of uh, matrix of india but i do want to say as unambiguously as i can that deterrence is a very serious kind of concept and i think india has a certain track record it has a certain position and it is not in isolation we cannot have a situation where people like president donald trump are constantly saying that my button is larger than your no. button and having this kind of shall we say statements because they in a way weaken the credibility of deterrence so which is why i make this point again that india is not alone so whatever we say or do will have much larger ramifications and we cannot predicate india's nuclear position on the pakistani tactical nuclear weapon thank you so much comrade bhaskar uh, that was comrade bhaskar discussing the announcement of the creation of a chief of defense staff and rajnath singh statement about india's nuclear doctrine join us next week for another edition of the big picture thank you